the target has evaded us. We must pursue it. Observation. They have likely escaped aboard the orbital shuttle that has been docked here. The Bay Control computer likely will have a record of their departure. Query. Have you discovered anything about the shuttle's course? Answer. I have managed to track the shuttle's movement across the shield network. However, the shield network does not stretch over the polar region, which was the shuttle's apparent destination. Statement. Dispatch a unit to the polar region with the last known coordinates and approximate path of the shuttle. They will not escape us again. Irritated declaration. There you are. It has been extremely difficult to track you down, Jedi. Quick clarification. But now that we have found you, we hope that we can facilitate communications. Unnecessary addendum. And put an end to hostilities. Unnecessary clarification. We merely wish to cripple your vessel. Once we tracked your coordinates, we were able to deploy several droids in this location. Probing query. We are, however, curious as to why you chose to come to the remnants of the Polar Telos irrigation system. There is nothing here that our instruments can detect. Eager threat. But we are looking forward to extracting your motives for coming here when we place you in torture restraints. Self-evident answer. Wherever you try to run, we will be there, armed and ready. Rhetorical query. So the query you have posed to us is one we put to you. What are you doing here, we wonder? Chiding statement. Oh, Jedi, there are as many of us as are needed to capture or kill our targets. Egotistical boast. And there are far more of us than any one Jedi. Destroy one of us, and more shall rise from the wreckage. Unnecessary threat. And our attack protocols are more than a match for you and your allies.
Lay down your weapons, and you shall not be harmed. I will not warn you again. Drop your weapons, or we shall take them from you. Do as they say. I sense people come to no harm. Why is it that everywhere we go, I end up in a cell? I mean, why did they lock us up? What is this place? It is a training ground for Jedi. What? This ice hole? Yes. It bears the semblance of an academy. But where are all the students? Curious. You've got to be joking. What is a Jedi academy doing out here in the middle of nowhere? It is a place hidden from the galaxy like the academy on Dantooine. But this place... Oh, Atris, you have been clever. Atris? It's none of your concern. Well, the sooner we're out of here, the better. Two crazy Jedi are more than enough for me. No one told me we were going to be dumped in a nest of Jedi. And what is it about this place that causes you such fear? What do you mean? We're in the middle of a bunch of Jedi. You know how they are. No, I do not. Not in the way you seem to. What? What are you doing? Get out of my head! Stop struggling. Let me follow the current. Deep, deeper to its source. Stop! Stop! Ah! Ah. With the fear is mingled guilt. It squirms in you like a worm. And the why? Ah. And there is its heart. You surprise me. I could not feel it before. Your feelings are a powerful shield indeed. Do not worry, Atten. If she is a Jedi, she will forgive. And if she is not, she will not care. You can't tell her. Please. I'm asking you. I don't want her to... Think less of you. I hardly think that's possible. Still, there is no shame in what you ask. We all wage war with the past, and it leaves its scars. I will not speak of yours, Atten, but there is a price for such things. What? What price? There are those who wage war and those who follow them. You are a crude thing, murderer, but you have your uses. You know how important this woman we travel with is. Even one such as you can feel it. You will serve her until I release you. And if I refuse? You will not. If you do, then my silence will be broken. And then, Atten, you will be broken. You fear the Jedi, and rightly so. If Atris learns of your choices, you will never leave this place. But whatever fear you hold of the Jedi, know that if you disobey me, that my punishment will make you beg for the death that has long hounded you. Wipe the fear from your mind. You will not find blind obedience a difficult master. You chose it once. You will learn to embrace it again. I don't know how you became such a manipulative witch, but why a vicious old scow like yourself would even bother with me is a bigger mystery. No game of Dejaric can be won without pawns, and this may prove to be a very long game. You are a slippery one. Your thoughts difficult for even one such as I to read. I suspect the self-loathing that squirms within you gives you a curious strength. Your spirit, as diseased as it is, refuses to allow you to give up, no matter what threats you face and whatever wreckage you leave behind you. I feel you have crossed our path for a reason. Perhaps even you, at the right moment, may be able to turn aside disaster. If so, your potential is not yet spent. Fine. I'll be your pawn. But I still think you've got the wrong man. Perhaps. But someone has to fly the ship, and the Force is a hard thing to predict. You have crossed our path for a reason. Our path brought us here for a reason. And now I know why. The past is here, and it must be met before the future can be set in motion. Uh, more Jedi speak. Care to explain? No. I've wasted enough time with you. Sleep, murderer, and be silent. I need no distractions. A critical moment approaches.
I did not expect to see you again after the day of your sentencing. I thought you had taken the Exile's path, wandering the galaxy. Yet you have returned. Why? Your concern is noted. Your friends have not been harmed. They have been detained for their safety. I find it unusual that you are traveling with others again. I had thought you had forsaken the company of others after the war. Or is that why you are here? Yet here you are. Perhaps you do not know yourself as well as you think. Regardless, your arrival here begs an explanation. Have you come to face the judgment of the Council, as you did so many years ago? Are you finally willing to admit that we were right to cast you out? You presume much. The Force does not guide your movements, not anymore. Its connection was lost when you fell. Perhaps you feel that the Force also led you to the Mandalorian Wars as well. But in truth, it only led to your exile. You and all the Jedi who followed Revan caused the Jedi Civil War. It was because the need to wage war burned within you. The Jedi Order asked only for time to examine the Mandalorian threat. They urged caution, patience, and you defied them. So when you returned, you were brought before us. You were a Jedi no longer, and so you were exiled. There was much about that day that was difficult to forget. Your words, your defiance, and when you stabbed your lightsaber into the center stone. I had... So I would never forget. Indeed, a lightsaber is the mark of a Jedi. When you turned your back on the Order, it was not yours anymore. I have always kept it, as a reminder of what can happen when your passions dictate your actions. I have kept it, so I would never forget your arrogance or your insult to the Order. Then you misunderstand its meaning while it is in my possession, and what it now represents. But I am not unsympathetic to your feelings. Leaving the Order must have been difficult for you. Yet you gave the Council no other choice. You gave me no other choice. Indeed. Very well. Your exile has given you some wisdom, at least. So then answer me. How did you find this place? And why have you returned after all this time? Your ship? Ah, the Ebon Hall. It is not your ship. Unless you are admitting to the destruction of the Paragas mining facility. Ah, an accident. Something beyond your control. You have not changed. Acting instead of thinking. Putting yourself before the galaxy, before the Jedi. Do you know what you have done? No. Your crime is much more than that. Without the fuel from Paragus, Citadel Station cannot maintain its orbit. It will crash into the planet and its destruction will echo across 20 other worlds. Telos was a test to see if the Republic could mount a restoration effort on the Outer Rim. When it fails, the Republic will not finance another. The other Rim worlds, devastated by the Sith, will remain graveyard worlds, devoid of life. And that is the magnitude of your crime. So you still hold to your flawed convictions. If you think to anger me, you are wrong. How is it that you are not content to confine your ruin to yourself? You must spread it to others wherever you go. Ruin yourself with your actions if you will. But when your actions bring harm to others, then you must answer for it. The Sith? What do you mean? You speak truly. You have encountered the Sith. I can feel the scars on you. Tell me, where did you encounter them? Paragus? What would they want there? They can't have been looking for you. You? If they thought you were Jedi, the teachings of the Sith blind them indeed. I am the last Jedi, not you. You betrayed our teachings, our beliefs, the very core of the Jedi Order. If these Sith attacked you, they will soon realize their mistake. And if you escaped, 
they most likely let you go to see if you would lead them here. We shall see. For now, the perspective on your situation has changed. I have your ship. I will return it to you. You must leave here before you place us in jeopardy. You offer your aid? After turning your back on me? On the Council? The Jedi is not something you embrace out of fear. The commitment is stronger than that. Something you never seem to understand. Perhaps. But if you help me, it cannot be done from here. There are others in the galaxy who may help us against a Sith threat. If you can find them, gain their trust. Perhaps our defenses shall be stronger for it. Take your ship, seek them out. If you find them, encourage them to gather on Dantuin. From there we can call a council and see what can be done. Then I shall send you on your way. It is now time for you to depart. We shall remove her, mistress. Come with us. Are you all right, mistress? The exile reminded me of something I had forgotten. Forgive me, mistress, but I must ask. The exile, I've never seen another affect you so strongly. Was she important to you once? We all have our heroes, and when we watch them fall, we die inside. She made a choice once, and I did not. The day we judged her, I stood in the chamber, and she was... She was so right. She was so certain of it. I doubted myself, but not now. She will never make me doubt myself again. But now, now I am tired. I must meditate. Of course, mistress. I will tell the others you are not to be disturbed. And please, do not exhaust yourself. We can attend to matters here. Why have you approached me? You will find them in the main irrigation channel room, in the northern part of the plateau interior. The particle emitters there that once governed the flow of water to Telos can double as force cages. They were caged for their safety, until we could determine your intent, exile. Atris cautioned us against your tactics, fearing that your allies would create a distraction. Your companions gave us little trouble, however. The male could have presented some challenge if he had resisted, but he chose not to. He has had some Michani training. He masks it well, but when you are in danger, his mask dropped into a stance we know well. I do not know. The Ichani forms are known to be taught to military special forces throughout the galaxy. If the source is a mystery to you, perhaps you should ask him. It would be wise to know those you travel with. Your ship is stored in the hangar. Atris has given you permission to leave this place, and permission to return if you remain in her service. You may ask... The mistress? What of her? She leads us. As she rebuilds Telos, she rebuilds the Order, and through them, the galaxy. We serve the Jedi. We do not question them. Yet, Atris has told us that the work here at Telos may pay for similar efforts in many worlds along the Rim that were destroyed when the Jedi turned on each other. She has said the Jedi Order needs such a foundation if it is to rebuild. She faults the teaching of many of the Jedi Masters as the spark of the Jedi Civil War. Atris has said that if Revan and Malak had been properly instructed in the ways of the Jedi, they never would have fallen, and nor would you exile. 
That is unknown to me. I have never observed Atris to teach Jedi, nor would I wish to. Atris has chosen instead to focus her efforts on galactic recovery. Once the galaxy breathes again, disciples will come. She predicted you would say as much. She seems to know you quite well. Perhaps you are the one who knows nothing. You may ask. This was once a mighty irrigation center for Telos. It survived the orbital bombardment of the Sith, though the inhabitants did not. Ancient irrigation channels still lie beneath the surface of Telos, waiting to be used again for the reconstruction efforts controlled from this facility. Shortly before the destruction of Dantooine by the forces of the traitor Jedi Malik, Atrus had many Jedi artifacts and knowledge transported here secretly. Even the Sith prefer life prey to scavenging a corpse. She thought that a world already savaged by the Sith would not prove a target a second time. It was a place where the artifacts and the teachings of the Jedi could be kept safely if the Sith could not be turned aside. The Jedi Council sensed it, Master Vrook, Master Vandar, but it was too late to do much except make arrangements for evacuation. It was a dark day for the Order. Many on Dantooine did not survive, Jedi or not. Atris would not speak for many days after the attack, and we feared our mistress was lost to us. In time, she regained her voice and her strength. She brought the artifacts and the teachings of the Jedi here and has kept them safe. Yes, many relics from Dantooine, some which predate even the destruction of Ossus. She was not able to save all, but she saved enough. She was able to bring them here before the Academy's destruction. It was a fortunate thing. She was not able to save everything. Viewing the relics is not allowed without Atrus's permission. There is truth in what you say. Yet, many such artifacts are sealed away in Atrus's chambers. But if you wish to see a few of them, speak to the last of the handmaidens. She has seen some of these objects and has an... interest in such things. Yes, she should be in the training chamber to the north and west of here. She constantly seeks to improve herself so that she may no longer be ranked last among us. Because she is easily distracted by matters that do not concern her or her duty. Such distractions weaken her and she knows this. I will not speak of them. Ask her yourself, if it matters to you. You may ask. We serve the Jedi, and we watch. Atris is the only Jedi here, this is true. But the mistress will bring others in time. You are no Jedi. Atris has made that clear. When you went to war, you gave up the mantle of the Jedi and became something else. I assume you meant no insult. It is forbidden for us to become Jedi. Even if we possessed the awareness of the galaxy that the Jedi possess, we are here because we are not Jedi. That is our purpose. We have taken an oath to never follow the teachings of the Jedi, only to watch those of the Order and carry out Atrus's will should it be necessary. Atrus believes the new Jedi Order that shall arise here will need to be guarded and watched by those not touched by the Force. She thinks it will give balance. Spoken like one who has fallen. If we had been there, you may never have fallen at all. The Jedi have long since lacked anyone to judge their actions and provide support should their power corrupt them. We are this strength. The Jedi Civil War proved that the Jedi are in need of such guidance. It is our duty to watch for aggression, rage, passion, and end it before it takes root. It is not harsh. It is necessary. 
I would have struck you down as you entered this place, if Atrus had not stayed my hand. Though you are not a Jedi, you have been sickened in Revan's service. If for a moment I felt you could bring harm to Atrus or this place, then I would end you. You are the Exile, the one Atrus warned us about. I am the last of the Handmaidens. This is correct. I train so that one day, that will no longer be true. It dishonors me that they would say such a thing to an outsider. But I cannot deny the truth in what they say. My thoughts are not always focused on training. Perhaps once having known the ways of the Jedi, you may understand what occupies my thoughts. There is much knowledge here, and only one of the Jedi remain. There is so much about their ways of battle, their forms, their stances, that may be lost forever if the last of the Jedi is taken from the galaxy. I know your meaning, but I have not been clear on mine. Stance, form, discipline, are a means of expression and communication. They speak one's heart and one's devotion to their cause. It was to the Jedi traitor Malak. It was to the Jedi traitor Revan. When Terrace was destroyed, it showed Malak's heart through its execution and intent. It was brutal, without finesse, but showed his commitment to defeat the Jedi. Yet with Revan, there was the same commitment, but it was a subtle thing like weaving threads in a tapestry, or strokes upon a canvas. He spoke through battle and tactics, in a way one could never do in words. He showed his heart at Malachor V, and finally, at the end of the Jedi Civil War. I believe he was speaking to Malak in that final battle, though few knew it. What stronger display than death, for conveying one's sense of being betrayed by one's own student? Revan's anger must have been great indeed. I would have wished to have been there for that final exchange, and seen the truth of their conflict with each other. But to say that seems an untruth based on what I know of the Jedi. The Force can drive others, but there is still choice, is there not? If there is no choice in the Force, then our teachings and our actions are for nothing, and I refuse to believe that is true. You may ask. She said, you betrayed the Jedi by going to war when it was forbidden to you. You turned on your masters, your teachings, and yourself. That is not all, she says. She says you know nothing of loyalty to any cause except your own animal instincts. And she told us why you fell to the dark side. Atris says that you fell to the dark side in the Mandalorian Wars when you gave in to your lust for battle. Once you tasted war... You could not give it up. Atris says, when the Dark Lord Revan returned to the Republic, you did not march with him because you had fallen so far, you could no longer feel the Force. I believe that is the extent of her expressed feelings toward you. There are variations at times, but all rise from the same foundation. Yes. It is difficult sometimes for others to truly speak their heart or listen to it. The words often prove difficult, or they do not come at all. Without having seen you and Atrus fight, I cannot say. Battle is a pure form of expression. It is heart and discipline, reduced to movement and motion. Then her expressed feelings will have to suffice. You may ask. I know a little of them, yes. Much Jedi knowledge is stored here. Secrets of their teachings, combat styles, and discipline. The Jedi relics are kept by Atris within the walls of her meditation chamber. Entry is forbidden. Atris has made her orders on the matter clear. And she says you are no Jedi. 
entry to her meditation chamber is forbidden. To even ask shows you doubt my loyalty to her. Most come from Dantooine, brought here before the academy there was destroyed by Malak. Not all relics were able to be saved, for there was not time to rescue them all. I am not permitted to speak of such things, and it is not your concern. I... I have seen a few of them. Yes, they were not always in Atris's meditation chamber. There were many relics, among them small cubes, warm to the touch, each containing their own light. When held, some would speak, ask strange questions. Yes, their questions were confusing. They seemed to think I was someone else, someone's student. I had thought perhaps I had damaged them in some way, but I could not think of what I had done. You may ask. I honor the face of my mother. It is not something spoken of in the company of others. There is no need to apologize. You were merely remarking on something that you saw. There is no wrong in that. It is not a sensitive subject, but a subject that requires trust. There is no such trust between you and I, and such trust takes time. Before you go, Exile, a question for you, if I may ask it. You have touched the Force. What does it feel like? Then tell me of its absence. I see. Thank you, Exile. I appreciate you sharing your knowledge with me. Did you find what you came for? There was something from your past here, something unresolved. I feel we did not come to this place by chance. You were led here. This woman who resides here, she did something to you once, something that hangs upon you still. There is a Jedi here, perhaps, in that you are correct. Yet there are no students, and this woman, this Atris, surrounds herself with those who cannot feel the Force. Curious. Plans are fragile things, and life often dashes expectations to the ground. Perhaps students will come to her in time. 
For now, she is surrounded by those who cannot feel the Force. Yes, her servants are not Jedi. Their minds are walls trained to resist tricks of the mind. This discipline blinds them to the Force as well, even if they were Force-sensitive. Invade the mind of another? It is not something done carelessly, or when there is nothing to be gained. Very well. Let us depart. Uh. He's only sleeping. It seems the journey here has fatigued him. I am sorry, General. I must have lost consciousness in the crash. I'm fine, General. Even power has been restored to my arm. What is this place? Where are we? This must be where I had detected the energy readings before, and the drain to the restoration shields. This room, this place, it looks part of a huge polar irrigation system, possibly planet-wide, like the one on Coruscant. I had been told by the Republic that it was not in use. I am, General. If you wish, I may travel with you, or join you at the ship. Very well, General. I will await your arrival. Ah, hey. You're back with us. We were just on our way to rescue you from those ghost women when... Uh, we got locked up. Ah, don't worry about me, I'm fine. Uh, how did things go with the Jedi here? Are you all done? Well, that's not exactly what I wanted to hear. No, I was just complaining. <laughs> I'm with you until things start going better for you. We need to stick together, you know? And who knows? I might be able to help you out of a tight spot at some point. Ah, hey. No mention it. <laughs> it's my pleasure. What? Look, I'm fine, okay? I was just a little dizzy when I first woke up. Ichani training. Huh? What are you talking about? Oh, that. Don't tell anyone, but you wouldn't believe how many fights you can prevent by just pretending to know that stuff. I mean, it doesn't compare to wearing a lightsaber, but then again, that doesn't seem to help you much. Well, hey, thanks. But you've got the wrong guy. I'm good at shooting people, cracking wise, and pretending to know how to fight with my hands. If it isn't the one who stole the Ebonhawk. Not so smug now, are you, you little thief? Don't be a fool. Atris stole the ship and the droid. Says you. 